Ah, greetings and welcome to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, an integrative holistic psychiatric facility located right side out of Delmont, Pennsylvania. My name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist, and today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be... Todd Brooks. And on my right... Brooke. Would be Brooke. And where, where are you from? Uh, would you share with where, what school you're from, Todd? Yeah, I go to St. Francis University. And Brooke? I'm from Seton Hill University. Brooke, and for those followers of our weekly educational rounds, you may understand that at Seclair we treat people, not necessarily diagnoses, and what we do is we offer a, a holistic view of an individual, mind, body, spirit, uh, treating the whole person and not just a symptom. So, and as you, the followers of these videos can see is that what we try to do is incorporate something in your life. So what we've often talked about, Todd, is that people live their lives often on wishes and hopes, don't they? Yes. When, when you, have you ever wished for something? Yeah. Have you ever hoped something would happen? Yes. Right. Were you ever searching for an answer in your life, Brooke? Yep. Yeah, and you'd ask other people, right? Okay, and sometimes you could ask one of these, ask, ask a question if you want something silly. Let's see, will I have cake for dinner tonight? Will you have cake for dinner tonight? Well, this says that the outlook is good. Mm -hmm. So why would, you, why would you place your hopes and dreams in something like this? Why do people do that? So that it's not their own responsibility? That's right. So what we do, why do we ask people, why do we ask people what to do? Why do we ask people advice? Why do we do that? to reinforce what we're wishing and hoping for. You bet, you bet. So 99% of the time, Todd, that when you ask somebody uh, some advice or a question, you already know what you're going to do and you know what the answer is. You're just looking for somebody to validate it. Or maybe you wish that somebody would point you in the right direction, right? So something that you wish. So maybe everyone's out there, when you, especially this is directed at the people who may be suffering from the blues or perhaps in a deeper type of depression or anxiety. Do you wish? Do you wish that things were better? Do you hope that things get better in your life? Well, you can keep wishing and hoping and you can roll out a red carpet. You can put a bag box full of cookies on the front door, put a neon sign that says, here I am. However, the chances are that something like that is not going to happen. I'm ready whenever you Okay. So, Mr. Todd, if you had a wish, what would it be? I've always wished that I could ride an elephant. You wish that you could ride an elephant? Well, you're in luck, my friend, as I have a personal connection with the... Fairy wish granter. What? Make your wish. I wish that I could ride an elephant. Your wish is granted. I don't see an elephant. Let's try something else. Okay, I wish that I grew wings. Your wish is granted. I don't see wings. Uh, one more. Okay, I wish that I could be invisible. Your wish is granted. Ah, I can still see you. I can still see you. So would you, uh, would you care to join us, uh, Fairy uh, Wish Princess? Yes, thank Okay, you. thank you. So perhaps as in your life there is, no, there is no Fairy Wish Princess. There is no anything like that. So let's take, for example, the end scene in The Wizard of Oz. The uh, Tin Man wanted a heart. And the Cowardly Lion wanted? Courage. And the Scarecrow desired brains. Okay, so although they didn't have these things at the beginning, did the wizard give them those things? Did he give them them? Did, could, he, could he give anybody courage? No. Could he give anybody brains? No. Could, could he give anybody uh, those things? Does no. that a heart? No. So what, what was the whole movie about? The whole movie about was them... Finding their own. Their yes, their, their, their hold was taking action and effort. So when the scarecrow had an intention to get brains, when the cowardly lion had an intention to get courage, when the tin man had an intention to get heart, it was all the action and effort that they put into their lives going through everything that they did that they developed those qualities, right? So all the, all the wizard had to do was reinforce in them by maybe some small tokens that he gave them. Remember? Remember? So what did he give? Does anyone remember what he gave the scarecrow? He gave him a diploma. Oh, yeah. Okay. Does anybody remember what he gave the, uh, the tin man? Like a heart clock. He gave him a heart clock. Mm -hmm. Okay. The tick, tick, tick like a heart. Does anybody remember what the, they gave the cowardly lion? He gave him a medal. 
Okay, so those are those are symbols. Those aren't those. The, a medal is not courage, and the, that heart, that clock card is not a heart, and a diploma is not brains. It's not intelligence, is it? Those things have to be earned, and they they have to be worked for. So when you're when we're suffering from depression, when we're in that dark place, feeling like we're walking through life with concrete blocks tied around our ankles, and we're in the dark, and so I say, you know, when somebody says, well, cheer up, uh, go see a funny movie, I'll tell you a joke, those things don't work, okay? It has to come from inside, and first of all, you have to do it by setting intentions. So you could tell us a little bit of uh, what's the difference between intentions and wishes and dreams, Brooke. I think what the biggest difference between wishing and being intentful is that a wish is connected to your emotions. So they're going to be affected by your anxieties and um, other things that you're feeling. Whereas being intentful is always followed by an action that is consistent with the intent. Um, so just for example, if I say that I desire to lose weight, for me, if that's connected to my emotions, the action that follows isn't going to be consistent with my true desire. Whereas if I say I would like to lose weight and I follow that desire by um, completing an action that is in line with the desire, such as eating an apple, then that is more likely to get me to my desired change. So what you're saying is I can wish to lose 50 pounds for the okay. next 50 years. But until I take some actions that follow the wishes, that mm -hmm. follows the intent, then little or nothing's going to happen. Right. So when all we do is wish and hope, sometimes what we do is we set ourselves up for disappointment, don't we? Mm -hmm. So rather than say, okay, well, so people out there say, okay, so how do you do it? So how would, how would a person go about that, Todd? What, the, what are some of the steps that somebody would use for to do the intentions. For sure. Well, like, like Brooke said, uh, intention is followed by action. So you can wake up in the morning and you can say, okay, I intend to make this a good day, a happy day. Or when you get in the car, I intend to be safe when I'm driving on the road. And those are going to be followed by action. So there are four, four major steps uh, to uh, creating action out of intention. The first one is get clear about something that you want and then write it down. So as you do this, you're, you're making it concrete. You're making it something that you can see every day and it really, it, uh, it validates that to yourself. The second thing you can do is share your intention with someone in a way that will supportively hold you accountable and uh, help you to take action. So when you tell it to someone else, there's someone else that's holding you accountable for that, uh, for that goal as well, not just yourself. And this could be a friend, this could be a, a family member, it could really be anyone, but just getting it out in the open to someone else is really gonna be helpful. The third thing is to do something today to demonstrate your commitment to achieving that goal. Uh, so Brooke brought up uh, the concept of maybe wanting to lose weight. So if I wanted to lose weight today, something I can do that's concrete today that will help me achieve my goal would be to go out and sign up for a gym membership. So that is taking an actual step for me to, uh, to go ahead and uh, achieve that goal. And the last thing is acknowledge that you did what you said you would do and take the next step. Okay, so now I signed up for a gym membership. Now I need to set goals to actually go to the gym on a frequent basis and follow through with that goal. So those are the four main steps, and if you can do those four things, uh, you're going to be well on your way. So you're talking about getting a clear goal, not just saying, I want to lose weight, or I want to be happy, or I would like a relationship. Uh, that's, that's, that covers a whole basis, a lot of basis, does it not? So when you share something with somebody, Brooke, asking your you're asking somebody else to hold you, hold you responsible, right? You're, you're committing to someone else that, that can remind you. It's just not to you. Because when you just commit to yourself and you don't get it done, it doesn't matter, does it? Right. You're not, you don't have any responsibilities. So then doing something today, even the smallest thing. So what we do is we build on small, achievable goals. Small, achievable goals. When, when we build on small successes, they begin to add up and they become mountains of success, do they not? And then what we do when we acknowledge, what we do is we self-validate. We have positive self-talk. I hope everyone out there talks to themselves. And what I hope we do hope you do is that you talk to yourself in a positive positive way that remember that we change the lenses in your glasses and look at the positive things in your life look at your positive attributes those are the things that you that you grow from so my hope and my wish for everyone out there is that you take an active role in your life that you get involved with in your life that you participate in life that you intend to seize the day even even a small biteful at a time so you know how to eat an elephant one bite at a time right
one bite at a time. No one can swallow the elephant, and that's what sometimes wishes and hopes are. We, we, we try to swallow elephants, okay? So as always, we end the podcast with a free prescription, fruits, nuts, and vegetables, uh, unplug your television, and for and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we would ask that you fish without bait. Be good to yourself. Where are you at, Todd? Where are you at? Right here. You're right here. And what time is it, Miss Brooke? Right now. It's always right now. And it's always right now. And you can always reach us at www.seclair.com. Educational runs until then. Namaste.